প্রিয় দর্শক আসসালামু আলাইকুম কোর ভিশন ফাউন্ডেশনের আয়োজন ভিশন ফর সাকসেসে স্বাগতম দর্শক সফলতা আমার আমাদের সবার কাম্য প্রতিটি ক্ষেত্রেই আমরা এর জন্য করছি প্রতিযোগিতা কিন্তু সফলতার সংজ্ঞা কি এর মাপকাঠি কি আমরা জানি সম্পদ নাম ক্ষমতা পেলেই কি আমি সফল কোরআন ও সন্নার আলোকে এসব প্রশ্নের উত্তর খুঁজতেই কোর ভিশন ফাউন্ডেশনের উদ্যোক্তা উন্নয়ন কার্যক্রম ভিশন ফর সাকসেস আমাদের আজকের আলোচনা আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং জিহাদ ইন ইসলাম আওয়ার স্পিকার টুডে ইমাম শামসি আলী ব্রাদার আসসালাম আলাইকুম আসসালাম সো ইস ওয়ান অফ দ্য মোস্ট টপ টপিক জিহাদ অ্যান্ড হোয়াট ইজ হোয়াট ইজ আওয়ার আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং ইয়া সো আই থিঙ্ক আই ইউজ দ্য সে ইন দিস ওয়ে talking about jihad or explaining about jihad to the people itself is the jihad itself because it's not an easy um possibly one of the most uh, misunderstood concept in the religion uh one of the most scared uh of the concept in the religion many people scared of it um uh, and it is being misunderstood not only by non-muslim friends but also there are some muslim who misunderstand the concept of jihad, then they mis- mispractice it. And so, so far we begin uh, with translation. And um, the people are losingly translate uh, the word jihad into holy war. Uh, and that translation is wrong. Not only that it is wrong, but it is also misleading. It is wrong because jihad is not uh, holy war. A holy war in Arabic is al-harb al-muqaddasa. Uh, war is al-harb, uh, holy is muqaddas. So it means al-harb al-muqaddas, this holy war. Jihad in Islam means to struggle, to strive, to do every possible way, to work very hard. You know, this is, uh, these are among the meanings of jihad. But you know, out there people always translate the word into uh, holy war, holy war, holy war. So when the Muslims are doing something, uh, they say this is holy war, mean war in the name of Islam in the name of God, uh, killing innocents, killing children, uh, in the name of God. And that's why they call it holy war. So, um, to be honest, as a Muslim who believe in peace and believe in compassion and love, I do believe that there is no war is holy. Because wars are always ugly. It is about killing women, children, uh, innocent people, destroying homes, uh, schools, public facilities, you know, destroying lives and civilizations. And, and that's why wars are ugly. There is no holy. Wars are bad. And so, coming back again, the concept of jihad in Islam is a very great concept. It had been uh, revealed to Prophet Muhammad wasallam since the beginning of Islam in Makkah. Before any war, before any fight, before any battle took place in the history of Islam, jihad had been given to Prophet Muhammad wasallam. He had been commanded to engage jihad. Even not only jihad, regular jihad. But the Holy Quran says, and this is the first ayah came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bihi jihadan kabira. So do jihad against them with a big jihad. Now the question is, what kind of jihad, which is biggest jihad, jihad kabir, big jihad, if there was no war in Makkah? So the answer to that, uh, according to our scholars, means wisdom, patience, faith, so, uh, rationality, you know, uh, good methodology, you know. Be, be humble, be open to them, you know, be, be, have perseverance in, in, in facing their challenges. So all these are a part of jihad that Rasulullah engaged in Makkah. Uh, and, and so jihad is, in the beginning, it was essentially moral and spiritual, because there is no physical uh, struggle at that time. Uh, and, and so to say that jihad is equivalent to war, it is not the right definition of jihad. We can say that war might be a part of jihad, but jihad is not only war. Jihad is so inclusive, so big. Every single thing that we want to achieve in life, uh, especially when we come to the, to the foundation of Islam, is, must be a jihad. We pray five times daily, it needs jihad from us. We do fasting in Ramadan, especially in the summer season, it's jihad from us. Seeking knowledge, going out there to seek knowledge itself, improving our understanding of everything about life, is also jihad. Building good families is jihad. Um, helping others on the street is jihad. 
every single good that we want to achieve in life must be with jihad. And so jihad basically is the foundation of doing everything else. And if I wanted to say uh, in other, in, in different words, maybe in a simple term, jihad is, you know, struggling to achieve goodness in every aspect of human's life. Uh, that's what jihad is all about. And, and it is also against nafs or... Yes, and that's, and that's why I, I like basically to mention that jihad basically has three divisions. And this is a big explanation. Uh, three divisions, number one is physical uh, and material. Number two is intellectual, is concerning our brain, our intellectuality, our thinking. Number three is our spirituality, our ruh. Okay. Now the first one is physical and material. It means that anything that you do in terms of your physical being and in terms of your material being, your money, your possessions, your home, your car, you know, get out there driving and you see someone who is weak on the street and say, can I ride you? Can I give you a ride? It's also jihad. Even just showing your cheerful, beautiful face to other people, make them happy, is a part of jihad. Uh, and that's what Rasulullah said, tabassumu ka fi waji akhi ka sadaqa. Smiling to your brother is a part of jihad, a part of sadaqa, a part of charity. And giving sadaqa is not easy. Sometimes yes. out of our ego, our, our uh, you know, egoistic tendency, we don't want to give. But smiling to other people, especially if you feel that you are higher than that person, you are bigger, more privileged than that person, but you can still smile to him or to her, that is really a jihad in Islam. So the point is that physical engagement, physical struggle to achieve goodness in life is jihad. Either you're doing business, going to market, either you're going to your farm, doing farm in your, you know, in your farm, or, or just cleaning the street, for example, is all part of your jihad. Building schools is part of jihad. Building mosques is part of jihad. Building public facilities, part open um, businesses for the community is a part of jihad. In general, anything that you do with your physical being, physical existence, and material being, money, possession, or anything, it is a part of your jihad. Okay? This is number one. Now, in this first part of jihad, it includes small portion is a fight. So fight in Islam is not denied. The Holy Quran full of many, many verses talk about war. But what is war in Islam? Basically, we are going to explain this in another episode. But let's, let me talk that, because people are del relating jihad into war. So what is war in Islam? War in Islam is, number one, defensive in nature. It means that you cannot do war. You cannot engage in any war without any cause. We'll take a short break. Dear viewers, uh, stay with us. We are taking a short break. We'll come soon. Dear viewers, you are watching uh, Vision for Success. Here with us, Imam Shamsi Ali. We are talking about understanding of jihad in Islam. Yes, brother. So, uh, the, the word, how it is um, actually misinterpreted, how it is misunderstood. Yeah, so, um, as I said, that the, the first part of jihad is physical struggle, and it includes war. But number one, we have to understand that war in Islam is a permission. It, it says in the Holy Quran, Udina lilladina yuqataluna bi annahum dhulimu. Permission is given to the believers because they are oppressed. So it means that if our enemies are coming to attack us, we cannot just be silent. We cannot just be, be quiet. You have to do something. And that's why you have to defend yourself. So it means that war in Islam is defensive in nature. We cannot initiate war for any reason. Unless someone come and wanted to kill us, then we have to defend ourselves. But even though someone wanted to come and, and, and kill you, you have to engage, number one, peaceful engagement. Uh, I used to say this in, to the small kid. You know, if someone wanted to come and hit you, what are you going to do? He would say, I will defend myself. I will hit him back. I say, not yet. According to the Holy Quran, smile and shake hand. 
You know, that's what the Holy Quran says. Either fa'abilatihi ahsan. You have to defend yourself in a better way. If someone come to punch you, then you have to smile and say, "Excuse me, sir. What, what is wrong with me? Is, is anything wrong? Uh, I'm sorry if I did something wrong." That is the best way to defend ourselves. But if, how about if he insists to kill you or to, to hit you? Then the Holy Quran says, "Fa'arid anhum." Then turn away, run away. You don't have to fight back first. Just run away, escape from him. So you don't have, you, he doesn't have to, to beat you. But how about if he's running behind you? He insists he wanted to hit you. At that moment, you cannot do anything else. There is only one way, and that is to defend yourself. In the process of defending ourselves, there are two possibilities to happen. Either we kill him, or we got killed. If we kill him, nothing to be blamed, because basically we don't want to kill anybody. And if we are got killed, that is what shaheed in Islam. We got martyred. And so the point is that war in Islam is not as, as simple as it is. Imagine when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sahaba, of course, to engage in a battlefield in a war. And the Holy Quran says, yeah, Fight those who fight you, but don't transgress the bound. Don't go beyond the limit. What does it mean, go? Do not go beyond the limit because Allah doesn't like those who go beyond the limit. Means if the people fight with you, with you using sword, then you have to use sword. This is called ayah with ayah. If someone comes to you and punch you with hand, then try to defend yourself with hand as well. That's what I call just war. But you cannot. Someone comes to you, fight you with war, with sword, and then you bomb with nuclear bomb. Because that is a zulm, that is oppression in Islam. Or according to some Muslims, according to some terrorists happen to be Muslims, they say, no, 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 America is coming to our lands. They are taking our lands. They are taking our economic resources. They are influencing our political life. They are changing our social life. So they, they feel that they have the right to come to America or somewhere else to bomb American interests. That is absolutely wrong, transgression in Islam. If someone is coming to you, attack you economically, what is the equal war? Attack them economically. So if America comes with the economic system, then you have to prepare yourself to build an economic system. If America has Wall Street, why you don't have your own, uh, whatever Wall you call it? So my point is that war in Islam must be just. Secondly, uh, thirdly, when you engage in a war in Al-Islam, then you have to engage in a very civilized manner. Means Rasulullah whenever he sent out army to, to fight, he advised them, don't kill the woman, do not kill children, do not kill elderly people, do not bother those who are worshipping in the house of worship. Do not even cut off trees. Don't poison the wells. Don't kill animals. So it means you can only engage at, in a war okay, against those who are fighting you. Even you find young people, strong, healthy, but they don't do anything against you, don't touch them. That is the advice of Rasulullah Imagine when Rasulullah entered into Makkah after he was forcefully leaving Makkah to Medina. And when he became strong, he was forced by the circumstance to come back to Makkah, you know, to, to, to invade and to take over Makkah. No bloodshed. No bloodshed. Yeah, there was no... No, blood. no shedding. No, he didn't shed any blood. No killing at all. You know, and it's ten, more than 10,000 people. 10,000 with strong army. Prophet Muhammad entered into Makkah. These people used to, to, to abuse them, used to punish them, used to hate them. You know, now they are coming pow powerfully, they don't revenge, they didn't revenge, they don't kill anybody. But nowadays, in the 21st century, people consider themselves more intellectual, more, sh more smart, more civilized. Whenever ent they enter into any city, they will destroy everything, they will kill women and children. And look at what happened in the Middle East. So my point, who is more civilized? The prophet who lived in the 7th century, or those people who cl claim to be civilized in the 21st century? So this war in Islam. So again, coming back, yes, war might be a part of jihad, but that war is a smaller part of jihad. Now coming to the second part of jihad, and that is intellectual jihad. The Muslims is about knowledge. I mean, we, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wants this ummah to be smart ummah. And that's why the first ayah came down is about read, iqra. And now the, the, the largest words in the, Quran, the Holy Quran, the most repeated word in the Holy Quran is the word, words which are related to our mind. Don't you think? Don't you reflect? Don't you ponder? All these are mentioned in the Holy Quran repeatedly. The second large number word, the first one is Allah, the word Allah. 
So it means that Muslims must engage in the jihad intellectually. And it was in the past. When the Muslims are so capable intellectually, they build a, a vast, huge civilization. Uh, the father of math is a Muslim. The father of chemistry is a Muslim. The father of medicine is a Muslim. Even so in intellectually means uh, not only religious knowledge. Of course, well. absolutely. Because it is only in those who are secular who separate between this knowledge and that knowledge. You know, for Muslims who understand that secularism is not in the religion, we, we embrace every kind of knowledge. That there is only kind of one kind of knowledge, and that's the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's being manifested in math, being manifested in medicine, manifested in chemistry, manifested in biology, manifested in religion, religious knowledge. But you cannot just say, oh, knowledge here is only fiqh or sira or tafsir. No, knowledge here is everything that you need to improve your life in dunya and akhirah, here and next, next one. So when we engage in this kind of uh, uh, activities, you know, improving our intellectuality to become smart, to do some innovations, uh, these are jihad in al-Islam. And our, the Sahaba, the Muslim of the past, have proven it. And that's why even today, uh, people in the West are enjoying this advanced civilization materially, I'm sick of material, because of Muslims. Because of Muslims. If they are honest enough, they will acknowledge that the foundation of material, material civilization in the West nowadays that we are enjoying have been founded by the Muslims. You know, if it is not because, because of... Uh, the father of chemistry, for example, Al-Bayruni. Al, Al, Al it is difficult for people in the West to understand this kind of knowledge. If it is not because of Ibn Battuta who traveled the world, not that many people know the world. Uh, if it is not because of uh, Ibn Sina, the father of medicine, no, not many people who knows medical. And so my point is that you know, Islam had been so uh, contributing into advancement of human civilization because of the intellectual. So now, wh why we are um, behind now? Because uh, those days when, when uh, they are supposed to be behind, they, they, are, they were in, uh, in the leading position. They were actually showing the civilization that they, they are inventing a lot of things. Yeah, I think one of the reasons why we are behind because we have taken this religion partially. means we consider ourselves so religious when we are in the masjid, when we are in the month of Ramadan, when we are in Mecca. But other than that, we, we, we feel that we have nothing to do with Islam. And so we do it according to our own desire. You know, the Muslim can, be adv can advance when they are related themselves to Islam in any field. You know, I can, uh, a Muslim can be a successful doctor if he is relating his medical to Islam. It means he is doing his doctor being a Muslim. It means he is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he do it professionally and then he do it with all courage because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to be professional. So one of the reasons why we are left behind because we don't care about uh, what so called what, what some Muslim call secular knowledge, which is not secular knowledge. It is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah teaches me fiqh, Allah who teaches me tafsir, Allah also teaches the, the doctor medical. He, it's Allah is the alim. He is the teacher of everything. Allah al Quran khalaq al insan. Allah al bayan. So he's the one who is the source of knowledge. Uh, and so because we marginalize our people who have this knowledge, we consider them not really Muslim if they are doctor, if they are engineer, if they are pharmacist. And, and that's what makes us basically uh, left behind uh, compared to the Japanese, compared to the South Korean, compared to the European, compared to many others in the world. So um, uh, you're talking about the uh, third point of this? Yeah, and the third part, part of jihad certainly is the most important. And that is what we call al-mujahada in al-Islam, and that is spiritual struggle. You know, uh, spiritual struggle is related to every corner of life. When I eat without spirituality, I eat for, for, for nothing because I eat only to fulfill my stomach. When I eat for spirituality, I say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, I eat halal and I ended my food with saying Alhamdulillah. It has spiritual sense. When I sleep, I say Bismika Allahumma Ahya. In your name, oh Allah, I'm sleeping. If I only sleep, that is just to fulfill my desire. Uh, when I pray, it's fulfilling our desire. So my point is that uh, when you talk about the third part of jihad, we are talking about the most fundamental jihad. And to be honest, initially, fundamentally, originally, that is what jihad is all about. It is about to enhance our spirituality. Why is that? Because when you are strong spiritually, everything will be easy. You know, I may not have money, but I have strong spirituality. I don't have to blame myself. I don't have to blame others. I, have to, I don't have to be over sad simply because I don't have money. If I am rich 
and I have a strong spirituality, I don't have to be over arrogant. I don't have to be arrogant. I have to be humble even. Because I have money, who gave me money? Allah gave me money. I have position, who gave me that kingdom to become a king? Allah gave me that kingdom. And so I will be humble for that. So the point is that when you have that str spiritual strength, you are going to be even best human beings. And that's what makes Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi best human being. That's what made the Sahaba best human beings. Not because of their money, not because of their physical and material power, but because of spiritual power. And that's why in Islam, everything's related to spirituality. Everything else, you know, we do fast. So we'll take a short break. Dear viewers, stay with us uh, with Vision for Success. Dear viewers, welcome back. You are watching Vision for Success here with us, Imam Shamsi Ali. So um, about uh, jihad, among our, our mm -hmm. lesson and how we can eliminate um, this misconception. Yeah, I think um, the first one is Muslims themselves must learn again uh, about jihad. They have to have a proper understanding of it. That jihad is not meant to harm anybody. Uh, never meant by the Prophet Sallallahu to kill innocent women, children. And you see, this happened just a few days ago. Uh, a young person who claimed to be a Muslim, his name Umar Mateen, they killed 49 people or more uh, in the name of Islam, possibly, uh, because and maybe they, he considered this jihad. And that is the, the opposite of jihad. This is an evil thing. Uh, jihad is a holy thing, you know. And so um, we have to understand the concept of jihad, that jihad is, uh, is about life, it is about development, it is about construction, it is about s building civilization, not destroying civilization. It's not taking life. So jihad had come to support our life to become better individuals and collective people. So even if I, I don't like somebody or, or some activities, can I hate that thing or no. can I? No, you may, you may hate what he does. You may hate what he choose, it means you don't like it. But you cannot hate the person. Do you know why? Because that person possesses fitra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Fitratullahi Lati Fatara Nasa alayha. Each human being was created on the state of purity. So that person, no matter who he is or she is, she or he has fitra, that is purity. So you have to, to recognize and to appreciate being as a fitri, being that he is possessing the fitra. And being a person, individual that possesses fitra, I mean, he or she has the, the possibility to come back. You know, let's say he is a drunk, a killer, bad human being, criminal. You know, the, the worst person. Don't forget that in his inner part of his life, there is an opportunity to come back and see the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best example there was Umar radiallahu anhu. He was one of the worst person in Makkah, Umar radiallahu anhu. But you know, when, he, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to open his heart, Allah just opened his heart. You know, his sister recited the Holy Quran, and that recitation of the Holy Quran entered into his heart, and Allah touched his heart, and he embraced Islam. When he accepted Islam, from the worst to become the best Muslim. He was known as al Farooq, the criterion, who can differentiate between right and wrong, who knows was, he was very sensitive uh, towards the right and the wrong. He knows that this is wrong and that is right. This is Omar, Allahu Anhu. So if you see any bad person around, you cannot hate. Hatred is not Islamic. Hatred is against Islam in any sense. Especially when you claim to be a da'i, you are calling the people to Islam, but you hate. There is no such da'wah and hatred. You cannot be da'i and hate, hateful at the same time. Da'wah must be based on compassion and love. So if you want to call people to Islam, then you have to build a love, compassion. Even uh, my action is uh, affecting other people, my family, my um, community, my religion. So if I do something, this kind of terror activities, 
that affect the whole community. I'm putting uh, the whole community in danger. Yeah, exactly. And that's why you have to think before doing anything else. Because anything you do, number one, it becomes a matter of consequences. If it doesn't, if it doesn't have any consequence here in this dunya, in this world, it will, it will have consequence in akhirah. So anything that your hands does, anything that your mouth says, anything that your body, physical existence does, you have to be responsible for it. And especially when you do something that is connected to your larger community, your family, your community, your ummah, that itself is really a huge thing. And especially when it has become to the image of Islam in America, in the West, it's really one of the worst things that anybody can do uh, in the name of Islam, but basically they are uh, fighting against Islam. So I can say such individuals such as Omar Mateen, who is doing and claim to be Muslim in the name of Islam, basically they are engaged war against Islam. And he, this kind of person, is my enemy. I have to declare in that way. Because he is, or anyone else out there, doing something against my teaching, my faith, and then therefore I have to declare that these kind of people are my enemies. They are not my brothers, they are not my sisters, and that's why we have to remind other Muslims that you have to be very clear. You have to have a, a, a strong and clear stand where you, where you are. And you have to declare them as an enemy. Don't embrace them. And do not find any justification to say, no, 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 because America is doing this and that. There is no basically reason to kill innocents in the name of bad policy of the United States of America. Thank you very much, Brother uh, Ali, uh, being with us. Uh, I hope uh, the viewers will uh, learn from these lessons sure. and will act accordingly. Thank you once sure. again. Dashok, bhul gyan, bhul bekha, bhul padokkhep, amade shabar jibon ke durbi shaho kore tulte pare, dhangsho kore dite pare. Shafil atar jannna aparihar jha chhe shathik gyan, ashun islam ke shathik bhabhe jani. Aparihar jha chhe visionary hawa, Visionary Uddukta Rai Bodde Dite Paren Shamaj Artho Niti. Vision Atto Vishya Shabang Dhara Vaik Cheshta Ani Dite Paren Shafallo Ashun Shafalatar Jonno Shepha Vaik Cheshta Kori Nutun Prajanma Ke Visionary Uddukta Hote Ebang Iti Bacha Ghaap Te Shikhai. Onushthan Shampur Ka Aapnaar Paramashra Mata Mat Likhon Vision for Success at USA at gmail.com Onushthan Di Pracharit Habe Prati Din Rat Naatai Puno Prachar Shakal Agarotai Ebang Dupur Dutak Tirish Minitai. इनशाला आबा देखा आगामीकाल ये समय ये टाइम टीवी ते असलम आलैकुम